Behavioral Neuroscience, Chapter 8, Segment 1, pages 229 to 236. Variation and specialization in nature is a result of evolution. Sensory processing. Sensory receptor organs detect energy or substances. Sensory receptor organs exist in all animals and are specialized to receive particular stimuli. They comprise of receptor cells, which individually react to stimuli to convert the energy of stimuli to changes in the electrical potential. Stimuli are events that affect the sensory receptor organs to potentially trigger sensory receptor organs to send a message. The adequate stimulus is the specific stimulus that affects a sensory receptor organ. Sensory systems of particular animals have restricted ranges of responsiveness. Sensory receptor organs are only capable of being affected by stimuli, stimuli with a specific range of intensity. For instance, humans cannot hear sounds over 20,000 hertz. <laughs> what type of stimulus was that? Johannes Muller, Mueller, Mueller proposed the doctrine of specific nerve energies. This states that receptors and neural channels for the different sense, senses are independent, having their own nerve energy. No matter the kind of stimulus applied to a sensor receptor, it will always give off a specific sensation. Energy potentials are used by every kind of receptor to transmit information across specific, <laughs> specific nerve tracts known as labeled lines. This allows for the differentiation of sensations caused by different receptors, even though they all use the same action potentials. Sensory processing begins in receptor cells. Receptor cells are designed to pick up particular energies. Receptor cells convert these energies into action potentials, which is a process called sensory transduction. Some receptor cells have axons to convey their messages. Others stimulate other cells' nerve endings, either mechanically or mechanically. <laughs> mechanically or chemically. Stimuli cause receptor cells to experience changes in electrical potential. These changes in the receptor's membrane potential are called receptor potentials. The Chinian corpuscles located in the skin and muscles detect vibration as their stimuli. They consist of layers surrounding an axon. And the strength of a stimulus determines the amplitude of the graded electrical potential. When the receptor potential gets big enough, it reaches a threshold, much like the initiation of an action potential and generates an action potential. Excitatory events uh, go as follows. Mechanical stimulation deforms the carpusal, so it'll kind of squeeze a little bit. Deformation stretches the tip of the axon, and this opens mechanically gated ion channels in the membrane, allowing positively charged ions to enter. Upon reaching threshold, the amplitude of an action potential is generated. Uh, sensory information processing is selective and analytical. The Greeks believed in tubes, Romans believed in straws, pagans believed in sex gods, Christians believed in the one true living God. It is now clear that the sensory organs and peripheral sensory pathways convey limited information to the brain. Much selection and analysis actually occurs along the sensory pathway. Now, coding is the specific process where sensory events are represented simply by action potentials uh, and electrical potentials in cells transmit sensory information. The pattern of electrical activity in the sensory system must convey information about the stimulus through nothing but action potentials, which are almost uh, identical. So this is why the neural codes are actually limited. Stimulus intensity uh, there's a wide range of intensities of a stimulus that can be uh, detected by certain um, receptors. Um, they are represented in the nervous system from a neuron sending action potentials at different frequencies. Frequencies are limited though because the maximum amount of action potentials that can be uh, given off by a, a neuron is uh, 1200 action potentials per second. Uh, multiple receptor cells work together to create a broader range for coding 
the intensity of a stimulus. Strength of a stimulus causes new neurons to cooperate in the coding process. The number of acting cells can convey... Oh, boy. He fell. Little baby. Maybe he should do the reading. Ugh, where am I? I feel like crap. Uh, number of acting cells can convey intensity of stimulus. <laughs> Range fractionation, fractionism, fract fractionation, <laughs> fractionation describes different neurons. Uh, bu, 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 describes different neurons responsible for different intensity ranges piercing piecing together this requires neurons with different thresholds the sensitivity of a receptor directly depends on its threshold the stimuli with high intensity will activate receptors with both both thresholds and those with higher thresholds which is how you can tell if a stimulus is high intensity now the stimulus location is the position of stimulus um, is the position of the stimulus, which is important information. Each receptor in the somatosensory system activates pathways that convey unique positional information, which is how you will know where it occurs. Specific labeled lines represent spatial information about the stimulus. The cells of the nervous system are organized in a map-like manner. Some are more sensitive. Uh, some have more sensitive areas of the body and uh, they have more densely packed receptors and they have bilateral, like with bilateral receptor systems, the time of arrival of stimuli at either side conveys spatial information of the stimulus. An example of this would be binaural stereo audio recordings, which is how most music is portrayed nowadays. It's left and right. So they can make it so that it sounds like you're in actual 3D space when you're listening to audio. And then last, you have adaptation, which is the um, which is the process in which receptor responses decline, and uh, this is this despite the maintenance of the stimulus. So the stimulus could be constant, like me holding the snake. I could feel the pressure of the snake on my hand, but if the snake doesn't move, I'll get used to it, and I won't really be focused on it. I won't be receiving that um, stimulus anymore. But when it starts to move that changing stimulus, I will start to notice. Um, and so these action potential frequencies, they decrease uh, as the constant stimulus persists. And there are two kinds of receptors when it comes to this. There's tonic receptors, which have little to no ad uh, adaptation. And there's phasic receptors, which do have uh, adaptation. And then, you know, it's the it, adaptation is really just a progressive shift in neural activity away from the accurate portrayal for physical events. So in a way, uh, your awareness, your accurate awareness of the stimulus decreases. And this is because the body actually um, rations and decides what it's going to send to the brain. It decides what's important. And this is to prevent the nervous system from being overwhelmed by stimuli and uh, that's because constant stimuli are much less significant than stimuli which exhibit changes. So if the snake was just laying there and not moving, that wouldn't be as important to the body. But since it's moving, I can constantly feel it. Uh, you know, the pressure on my fingers, the vibration on my pachinian corpuscles, and so on.